How you doing? This is Corey Hunter and welcome to the podcast where I talk about black web series. Um, I'm going to review some black web series that's on the tube, specifically on the tube because, you know, um, I feel like a lot of emerging filmmakers, a lot of people who have dreams or a lot of people who's dabbing into it, uh, just beginners in general, they usually turn to YouTube as the first option. It's the easiest access. It's I would like to argue that it's perhaps the most well known. Yes, we have Vimeo and others, but um a lot of people throw their stuff on YouTube hoping to make it big, but yeah, big dreams and high hopes. For the most part, I feel like a lot of web series have do have the most access on YouTube. So I wanted to try to find the the web series that like managed to slip in between the cracks. Because a lot of times when we go on YouTube, man, we try watching, I guess, our podcasts, news, clips, and, you know, just, you know, five-minute clips here and there. But um, a lot of people don't watch it as a channel, and we need to remember that YouTube is a channel. It is there for people to put up movies and television series. And the thing with that is, yeah, people know it's there, but they don't really know what to look for. And there's so much there. It's not like um, Netflix where they like catalog it for us, where they put things there for our preferences. Yes, they do have the home feed and such, but it's also intermingled with just a whole bunch of entertainment or clips or news clips or whatever it is you're into. So everything is just jumbled together into, instead of just like movies and shows. So I wanted to try to like comb through all YouTube and just try to get... No, I mean, just, just a handful of, like, s- recent black web series where, you know, we got new filmmakers just trying to make it happen, who's trying to make it happen on, like, a small budget. And, yeah, man, just give them a little bit of shine. So, with that said, we're going to we're gonna turn into a uh, Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk, obviously, is a black web series. It's, it's also connected to the Tough Love series. Now, I have never checked out the Tough Love series, but I will be sure to do so. In 2016, they won a daytime Emmy. That's dope. That's a big deal. And so, with that said, it only makes sense to make a spinoff series. Polo Talk sounds like a dope name for a podcast, and rightfully so, because our main character hosts a podcast. So, what is it about? Well, we follow Lyric, whom has a podcast in which she gives relationship advice. Things quickly takes a turn for the worse when she finds her man cheating on her. This triggers the end of their relationship and sends Lyric's life spiraling out of control. On one hand, she has to deal with the heartache of breaking up. And on the other hand, her career takes a hit when she is fired from her podcast. Because after all, who really wants to take relationship advice from a single woman? A person who can't even maintain her own relationship. Then to top it all off, Lyric finds herself in an odd love triangle, and she has two friends who we follow into further subplots. All in all, there's a lot going on, and with that said, we can finally dive into this review. First off, for clarity, this review is based off the first three episodes of the series. I feel like you should know by the third episode if you want to rock with a series or not, or at the very least, you get the gist of it. This series already seemed like it has a following as the first episode, as of right now, has 332,000 views. Woo! Congrats. This is what people would consider a micro-budget. Now, let me just throw this out there. If you have a budget, any budget, I'm going to judge you far more harshly than somebody who don't have a budget. And I think that's fair because... You have a budget. So the first thing I notice is that it's clean. I mean, um, sharp image, sharp sound, sharp audio. I can see the money behind it, all right? Regardless of how micro it is. How do we know this show have money before we even get to the credits? Because the credits always review things. Like when you get to the credits, you see a list of names. After you see a certain amount of names, you start to realize, oh, yeah, this show has a budget, all right? Um... Yeah, man, when you got somebody holding a boom mic, when you got somebody who's an editor, when you got somebody else who's a cinematographer, when you have a producer, 
when you have a long list of people as the cast, when you have all these people and all, and there's a whole bunch of different names attached to all these um, titles, you have a budget because everybody's getting paid regardless of how much or how little. And uh, that's a big deal because even if everybody's getting paid a little bit, it all adds up. That's what I'm saying. A thousand here, a thousand there, a thousand there. All of a sudden, you know, twenty thousand dollars is gone. Yeah, that's a budget. Um, like someone who don't have a budget, like me, I did it. Uh, the swiping series. When you look at the 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 credits at the end, it isn't really long. I stretch it because I make it look pretty and whatnot. But um, other than the name of the actors, really behind the camera, behind the computer, behind. Everything in pre, from pre to post production is really just me and like one other guy, sometimes two. And um, even when I do have help, it's really just on the production level. So pre production is on me and post production is on me. So yeah, when you look at the end credits and you see the same name over there and there, like when you see the same name over and over, like for director, cinematographer, producer, editor, that's somebody who's working with no budget because that's the person who's doing it all. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, I'd be hearing the whole, oh, yeah, man, um, you know, I want to be a master of one thing rather than a master of none because somebody who do everything is a master of none. Well, that's what a filmmaker is. A filmmaker is a jack of all trades and um, to the ultimate level. You get me? Like, if you, if you, otherwise, you're not a filmmaker. Like, you, you might be a director. Like if you if you if you're a director, then you're just a director. If you're a producer, you're you you're just a producer. Like if you're in a movie making business, then you're in a movie making business. But if you want to call yourself a filmmaker, then you're wearing multiple hats. You know what I'm saying? And just because you're wearing multiple hats, don't mean you're not a master at a particular craft. Right off the top of my head, man, I want to say uh, like Tyler Perry, like. You know, I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about this guy, but one thing that can't be disputed is his success and the fact that he can wear the title of filmmaker because he has and have been doing for a long time wearing multiple hats. Now, how you feel about his craft is up to you. Yeah, back to the show, back to Polo Talk, all right? Before we get to the credits, we can tell they got a budget because they have an intro. So it looks like they played with After Effects to create a dope intro. They've got a soundtrack. I'm pretty sure it's titled Pillow Talk, like the show. So, you know, when you can get a soundtrack for your show, you got a budget. Um, what else we have here? Yeah, man. So some drone shots. Uh, drone shots is, you know, them nice pan shots that's uh, showing the skyscrapers over the buildings, showing the city, seeing the train, all the stuff that we love about New York. So those nice panning shots, those nice establishing shots. Panning shots, too, um, when the camera's shifting um, smoothly across the location. Panning shots, those those shots was nice. It was definitely in there. And I don't mean like the handheld shots, because we can have panning shots that's handheld. It's a, uh, you know, like a vlogging thing, uh, you know, a small filmmaker thing. Sometimes movies with budgets use it for effect but here you could tell they had their right instruments i could tell they had a nice little gimbal on them based off of how smooth all the shots is how clean it all is how organized it is you can tell that you know there's money attached to it so with that said um yeah man am i am i saying anything about that because i keep on mentioning the money what i'm saying is in terms of YouTube, man, it's a step above the rest, all right? This is a show that considers itself a web series, all right? Now, web series is different from, like, a television series or any other series. A web series is a series that's intended to go on the web, all right? Usually shows that's intended to go on the web has traditionally have smaller budgets than, like, television shows, for example. When somebody's coming up with an idea to come to create a web series and dove it straight to the tube, Usually, they don't have much resources, much of a budget. They're just trying to make it happen. They're using YouTube as a stepping stone to get to the next level. Even though it's obvious that this show was created to um go to the YouTube, it's a step above the rest in terms of quality. It's really clean. It's really nice, all right? So, the quality is there. The, the, the craftsmanship is there. Moving along... It's a drama. That's another thing. It gets really melodramatic. Like I said, I gave you the synopsis of the show. It's really about relationships and, you know, 
it get preachy. It get preachy. Once again, I'm only going off the first three episodes. So, you know, aside from the main character and uh, her two friends who we drift off into their subplots, the show get drifty. It's really drama. Uh, characters uh, start saying something heartfelt and drift into a whole monologue. Um, when I was right, right and swiping, sometimes I got caught in that trap. I would have liked that it had a little bit more levity to it, a little bit more comedy, a little bit more lightheartedness. Uh, I feel like that always works best with um, rom-com, but I don't, like I said, this is not a rom-com. This is a drama, but it can easily be a rom-com if, you know what I mean? A little bit of jokes here and there, you get me? Uh, I think people resonate like with that. I think it always add a bit of magic to it. I think people like seeing other people be playful. I think people like seeing personality. And it's, it's, it's always, as a filmmaker, as a director, like just talking to my actors and such, it's easier for them to like loosen up and show those candid moments during comedy when they're getting lighthearted, when they're playing around. Even when they like delivering dialogue with each other, they're using each other, they're bouncing off each other like a ping ball. It, it starts to open them up. You start to see a little bit of magic, a little bit of spark. Like comedy had just have that that magic to it. And this show just said, No, nah, we don't want comedy, we wanna drift into, we just don't want we just wanna dive into that drama, right? We want people to like really feel how hard it is for this single woman and to really feel her pain that, you know, this dude cheated. And yeah, you could do that. And then the next thing you could throw some comedy in there. But um, that's a personal preference And I don't think it works against the show And this is why um, Once again this is like a spin off of Tough Love right And uh, I haven't I haven't checked out Tough Love personally Like um, I know I never saw an episode of Tough Love But like I said It's, it's in a woman uh, web series So t- Since it's a spin off of Tough Love It's bringing That audience with them so if that's what Tough Love was, and this is a spinoff, and it's have the same vibe as Tough Love, then it's staying faithful to its audience. And if you're staying faithful to your audience, then you no, know, that's not a lo- that's not a loss. That's just being smart. That's just what it is. It, it has a certain vibe already. It has a certain template. It has a certain structure. And why would you do that? Like, why would you change the structure for what? It works. Like. I know we watch these big budget Marvel films and we like, you know, we we complain about how it got that that cookie cutter template to it. But um, truth is, the structure works and that's the structure for those line of movies. People who watch one movie, like they're expecting to see that same spark and something else that connected to that franchise. And since this is what we consider connected to the Tough Love franchise, if Tough Love is that melodramatic drama then and this show is the same then it just makes sense because they're serving the same audience and tough love has managed to generate that audience the show works man with swiping i i I try to jump between drama and comedy um because i like to see that spark but you know here they want to dive straight into that drama drama is always a little tougher to pull off in my opinion but when you when you when you pull it off it's dope like I said, they serve a particular audience. And if this is the audience that Tough Love have, watching this type of template, then it show sure works. Actors did well. Not extraordinary, but well. Uh, I like the title of the show, Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk sounds just like a podcast. It sounds like a, a trendy name for a podcast. So for the show to be named after that, which is the podcast, it's dope. It works. So I like that. I like the look of it. Like I said, once again, it's clean. And yeah, man, that's 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 where I'm at with it, man. Would I advise you to watch Polo Talk? Well, just off rip, man, I think this show is like a bigger show than the rest of the shows that I will be reviewing. Um, it has a big following. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, it's not millions, but it's a pretty big following. Like, it's definitely an accomplishment. So if you saw Tough Love, then you already made up your mind. Would I advise it? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, man. That's another thing I want to dive into. It is a, it's 20 minutes long. So if you're watching a show for 20 minutes and have this uh, clarity, yeah, man, bang with it. Now, I would say that, uh, yes, I watched the first episodes, but 
I don't feel like the story really picked up or really started into the second episode. The first episode was a nice setup. I feel like the first and second episode could have been combined. Like, I don't feel like we needed 20 minutes to see the first episode. I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Like, it's real simple. I'm gonna spoil it for you. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna spoil it for you. She just found her man cheating in the first episode. It's it's that's pretty much what the first episode is. And I don't think I needed 20 minutes for all that. You get me? I felt like that could have been done a little bit more swaggier. But I see um, it is a big setup. She meets another love interest at the same time. You always want to take your time with that because there's going to be big payoffs later on. Like, that's a big setup. So you don't want her to just bump into somebody and you're like, oh, okay. She's on screen with this dude for five minutes. You want to show, like, some type of chemistry between them. That's nice. <laughs> you feel me? That's nice. Um, but yeah, man, I felt like the show, I felt like the first episode could have moved a little bit faster. Uh, I was cool with the second and third episode, though. I liked it. It flowed. It was nice. You got to see some more side characters dive into different avenues, different issues that they're having, which is dope. Um, it's really exploring our whole 20, 30 year old um experience black experience in terms of their love life uh and they do this through the main character and the the the, the side character so that's dope yeah if you don't got nothing else better to watch if you wanted to see something about relationships yeah you could watch pillow talk now i'm not gonna say stop watching whatever you're watching and watch pillow talk what i'm saying is if you're on the tube swing by you get me? Um, Pillow Talk is nice. Uh, it's Like I said, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's just straightforward. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not bad. It's not extraordinary. It's just good. That's that's how I feel about Pillow Talk. And that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, man. That's 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 all I got to say about that. As Forrest Gump would say. So, yeah. Thank you for checking me out. For checking this out. I'll be talking about more web series as I find them. Um, I'm going to keep on dropping these. Hope y'all rock with me. Hope y'all liked it. Check out Swiping the Web Series. Yeah, we out here. So, yeah, don't forget to uh, subscribe, like, share, comment. Like I said, I love a great dialogue. And thank you, as always, and until next time.